Shelley Sorcival? Yes. Keith Dice? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. Justin Lane? Yes. Robert Paris? Oh, we can hear you. Okay. Thanks, Rob. We'll work on the raising the volume. Thank you. Marlon Barnes? Yes. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Thank you. We'll go back now to item 5A, Gavia Economic Roundtable Report, presentation by a member of the members. I'm here. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Hi, everybody. Okay, where's my glasses? Hi, John. Hi, how are you, Kimberly? Thank you. Thank you for having me again, Holly. Thanks for the invitation. Kimberly Mavers, President and CEO of the Greater Antelope Valley Economic Alliance. And I am here to present to you our 2018 Economic Roundtable Report. It's our sales pitch to the world of everything that's great about our home, the Greater Antelope Valley. So, do I have a clicker, Holly? Here's oh. Thanks, man. So weird to see you here. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. It's great to see you here. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> so, as you guys know, you are one of our great investors, longtime investors that support regional economic development. Uh, we'd like to thank all of our investors and supporters anytime I come out in public and thank everyone who helps us do what we do, which the basic mission is to retain, expand, and attract wealth-creating jobs. It's that simple. Jobs, the four-letter word, jobs. Jobs. So, when we collect our data for the Economic Roundtable Report, we do it specific to the 24 zip codes just within this region. We don't rely on the L.A. County MSA or the Kern County MSA to tell our story because, as all of you in this room know, we are so very different than L.A. County and Kern County. We're not Bakersfield Oil and Gas and we're not L.A. County Metro. So we can't rely on their data to tell our story. So we drill down to the 24 zip codes very specific to North Los Angeles County and Southeast Kern County to tell our story. And this year's theme was accessibility, availability, and affordability. Because we are at a point, and I think anyone would agree with me, we are on the cusp of the next big boom of North LA County. There's no denying it. We're the only place left in Southern California where there's room to grow, there's affordability, and we've got space. So the trifecta of fun begins. Matt? So in the last five, year, five and a half years, actually, that I've been in this role, we've changed the way that we've used our data and our round table report to tell our story. And I want to walk you through and remind you why we did this and what brought us to where we are today. So in 2014, the story was a very negative reputation about California schools. Companies all over the Allen Valley were having trouble recruiting primary care physicians, teachers, educators, um, scientists, rocket scientists, because of the image of California schools. So I reached out to our school districts and said, help me tell our story, because I know what we're doing in STEM education. I know what we're doing from China Lake all the way down through Acton, and it's amazing, and the story needs to be told. So in 2014, our centerfold story was about STEM education and the amazing educators that are doing their job well here in the Antelope Valley on behalf of our future workforce. 2015, Tom's favorite story, was our unprecedented five-year drought. Actually, back then it was only about a three-and-a-half-year drought, but unprecedented drought. And I had to respond to a lot of commentary around the nation where people were saying, California was closed for business because of this unprecedented drought. And I'm looking around going, wait a minute, we just got Kinky Sharia, we just got BYD, we just expanded Lance Camper, we just, Northrop's going to go and get a new big contract. How can they say that manufacturing and that California is closed for business when we're doing all this cool stuff? So that was our centerfold story. And thanks to my friends at Pondo Water District, formerly Pondo Water District, and ABEC, you guys all helped me tell that story. And you helped me write the centerfold story. And we got that really cool picture of the aqueduct. 
and then we lost some batteries. Let's give it a plus or minus a year or two to get it accurate. But 
we compare with other population sources and other demographic sources that other municipalities and county government and other agencies maybe like you use and those numbers are creeping higher and higher and we are truly populations our communities our five cities and our two counties where we're still growing by population every single year and it's not going to stop for quite some time so we've got to make sure that we're telling our story and that we're showing the growth trends and then for planners we need to be planning for that growth as well next slide so talking about the leading edge, and that's our brand, and then talking about the trifecta of affordable, accessible, and available, you'll click through the next pages, which are LA County and the municipalities, and we gave, this year we gave our cities a spread. Instead of just the one page like we've done in the past, we actually opened it up and said, City Hall, tell your story and tell it bigger and more give us more data. So we opened up our report this year to let each of the five cities tell their story in two page spread instead of just a single page. And they did it. They did a great job telling their story. So click to the centerfold, next slide. The centerfold gatefold, and I just want to highlight for you, LA County and Kern County specifically, and then you open up the gatefold and it shows you, uh oh, excuse me. We had to do a little editing, and I'll share with you. So our gatefold looks like this, and then you open it up, and that's our centerfold story about the affordability, availability, and accessibility. And we wanted to make sure that everyone knew in big, bold, bold and bright colors that this is our story this year, and we are sticking to it. Next slide. Okay. Um, right behind the gatefold are examples of two ads that we've used, and, and people sometimes ask me, what do you show, what do you say when you're putting an advertisement in a trade magazine, a site selector's magazine, what are you saying about the Animal Valley? And so this year I wanted to put in there two examples of ads that we've used recently to tell our story. One is about if you don't think you can afford Southern California, think again. And then the other is showing how much money, smart money, is being invested in this place and by people like Richard Branson and Elon Musk and some of the really smart, rich people that like to invest in cool places like this. Now, here's the Kimberly Mavers faux pas of the year. In your report, you will see there's a stapled correction page in there. So if you look at our first time home buyer index on page 37, the original report has question marks in that box. Somehow my final PDF didn't get uploaded to the printer. We've tried to make it good using a stapler and put in the corrected page inside so that you can see, and you won't have to reference Frank because I know you're going to ask me this question. First time home buyer affordability index 55%. Housing affordability index for the traditional buyer or, or return buyer is 45%. And then on the other page, on page 36 down at the bottom where you saw some question marks, that was on the um, inventory and the availability of open commercial industrial space. And because there were question marks there, we hadn't quite answered the question. And it is 4 to 11% depending on the community. So we needed to make that correction as well, and I do apologize profusely for that, and we'll take full responsibility for those question marks. Next slide. And then finally is bragging, and I, I always encourage everyone in our, our groups to brag about this place. We are the first people that someone's going to ask, what about the Animal Valley? What's cool about Edwards Air Force Base? You know, what's happening in retail sales? Retail's dead, right? No, look at our retail sales. Look what happened last year. We took the last four quarters of reported retail sales from each of our communities, and we show a change from 2.7 up to 9% increase in retail sales in our five cities. That's remarkable when you're hearing other communities suffering and their retail's going in the tank. That's not happening here because our cities are looking at how to invest in retail because that drives tax dollars and tax revenue. And then Edwards Air Force Base, we're always needing to protect Edwards and we need to show their 2016 impact analysis. We show that every year, so this last year's that's reported 
is 2016. We have to show the $1.8 billion that's invested and then recirculated in our communities here in the Antelope Valley because that is important to every one of us in this room. Next slide. Harvey Holloway does a great job helping us with the cost of living index, the uh, real estate comparisons, and telling our real estate story across the 3,000 square miles that we represent. So Harvey gets the kudos for his dare to compare real estate pictures. He always takes a picture of something down in Santa Clarita and says, oh look, for that same dollar you can buy this mansion in Quartz Hill. Next slide. Finally, one of our lovely that was two weeks ago, because it's all gone now. <laughs> Those beautiful wildflowers <laughs> blew away in last week's wind. But I'm here to answer questions. Of course, I am your cheerleader for the Antelope Valley. <sighs> Been doing it for five plus years, having fun, loving it, happy to be your representative, and happy to take your questions. And Frank always asks me a really tough one, so I'm ready for it. I might dodge the wall. Thank you, Jack. Any questions? There's more reports available to our friends at ABEC if you need them for your grant writing, for anything else that you use this tool for, but certainly lean on us for the data. If there's edits or corrections, please let me know. We always upload a digital version of the roundtable report after July 1. We collect all the corrections and edits. We make those throughout the spring, and then July 1, we'll upload a new digital version that you can download and share with your people, but it'll have any other corrections that we haven't caught so far. So be my additional eyes and ears on that, please. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or questions? Roll call vote, please. Shelly Sorcival? Yes. Keith Dias? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. Justin Lane? Yes. Robert Paris? Rob? Marlon Barnes? Yes. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Gary, thank you. Item 7A, Finance Committee. Committee Chairman Donato, do you have your report? Yes, I do. Um, Finance Committee met yesterday. And uh, as you can see in your agenda, we started a new process regarding showing the checks, uh, check numbers as um, they were being payable. So, I'd like to move on uh, board order uh, 7A1 that uh, we accept the uh, check registry through April 10th. Second. <coughs> Any questions or discussion? Roll call vote, please. Shelly Sorcival? Yes. Keith Dias? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. Justin May? Yes. Robert Paris? I heard you. Thank you. <laughs> Marlon Barnes? Yes. Gary Van Dyke? Yes. Gary. Okay, item uh, A2, consideration possible action to approve the Treasury report for the month ending March 31st. I move on uh, board order 782. I'll say. Any discussion or questions? I, I have a couple items I'd like to discuss, a couple of things. Sure. Um, go ahead. I want to take note of those. There are a couple of things if you had a chance to look at the uh, report. One is the interest rate has gone up a little bit, finally, to about almost 1.4%, which I haven't seen that in years. But the other thing that's noted, which is um, the agency's done a really good job, um, we've got over you know, close to $133 million in reserves with our bonds and everything we have. But the biggest thing here that the board has done well with is our bank water asset. Which, you know, we got over $16 million, almost $17 million of t at today's rate with um, bank water in our uh, existing. You watch this, this, this item is going to grow continuously. Um, I would say we're probably, you know, an acre feet, what are we, about 170,000, 160,000 acre feet of water? Yeah. You'll see that in the report tonight. It's, 
Oh, okay. I, I, yeah. I'm jumping the gun, so okay. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited, so we'll talk about that, but the finance, um, we're in really good shape right now. Any more discussion? Roll call vote, please. Shelly Sourceable? Yes. Keith Dias? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. Justin Lane? Yes. Robert Paris? Thank you, Rob. Marlon Barnes? Yes. Gary Van Dam? Yes. Gary. Okay, the next item is A3, the consideration of possible action to approve the agency membership uh, for the fiscal year 2018-2019. Um, That's in your, also your agenda. Um, these are the items that we um, uh, approve or, or go over every year. Uh, one of the things that caught our eye was the um, state water contractors charge, and I know that's going to uh, be looked into right now, but um, the fees just keep on escalating. And I just asked yesterday to make sure that I, I have a strange feeling there's some padding going on. Um, be put into the state water contractors and are paying for things that um, maybe we shouldn't be paying for or, or and but that will be a different discussion because um, <clears throat> you look at our dues they you know they just they just escalated from uh, two seven two hundred seventy thousand two hundred seventy seven thousand in uh, twenty fourteen up to three hundred thirty three thousand a thirty percent increase. What what has changed that much? You know, to make dues go up that much. So, yeah, we're going to actually table this item for the next. Meeting. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So that item's going to be tabled. Uh, so I guess my motion would be to approve um, the existing membership. Anybody have any questions on the membership? Well, are we going to table the whole thing? The whole thing on the table? Yeah, let's table the whole thing, and then we'll we're going to discuss it again at the finance committee. Okay. To right. answer those questions that were brought up yesterday. Okay. 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 Then I'll just all that. That's please take notice of that. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item seven B: Adjudication of Water Master Committee. Matt, can you help us with that? Yeah. If uh, Director Paris doesn't mind, I'll take the lead on this one. Um, we do have a. Uh, Water Master meeting tomorrow, scheduled tomorrow at 10 a.m. here in this, these board chambers. And a few items on the agenda are hopefully approving the, the transfer forms. That's been out for public review and comment for 30 days. Uh, tomorrow we're scheduled to have a public hearing on that and hope, like I said, hopefully approve those policies and procedures for transfer. I'd like to say something that I'm totally supportive of the transferability. I'm glad that the um, your group, the uh, advisory groups around the area have, you know, done that because I think it's fair to have the opportunity to have people be able to move water throughout, you know, our, our district without a bunch of red tape, and, you know, simplify things. So that's really good. Yeah. Uh, another item on the agenda, also a public hearing for consideration is to approve the, uh, the section related to order of water use that just really outlines kind of the pecking order of how you uh, pump your water rights, whether it's production right, return flows, uh, federal water, stored water, etc. So that item will be discussed tomorrow, uh, as well as the continuing discussion on the pre ramp down production for the public water suppliers, Exhibit 3 producers. That's uh, gone back and forth a couple times now. Uh, I believe the public water suppliers met and proposed a a uh, new methodology that they'd like the board to consider tomorrow. So that item will be discussed. Um, and then uh, they're also going to set a couple of new public hearings uh, to discuss carryover water. And oh, I guess that was the only one, just to discuss, to start talking about carryover water rules and regulations. And then uh, the water master attorney will be given an update on the hearing that was held regarding Feeling Pimpling Hills Community Service District regarding their, their production during the ramp period. So that's all I have to report unless there are any questions. Yeah, I had a question, a couple questions now. One is on carryover. Who was pushing that carryover water? Uh, well, this is just a, a section of the proposed rules and regulations that have to be drafted. 
So this is the normal process of the engineer drafting the rules and regulations uh, reviewed by the attorney, and then it has to be distributed for public comment. So, okay. so, so there wasn't a motion filed before Kumar on no. the carryover? No, not yet. Okay. And where is Cortel <laughs> with that? Their ramp down? I'm sorry, what is that? Here? Where's Cortel at with their ramp down numbers? Um, well, like I said, the, the pre ramp down production discussion is going to be tomorrow. Uh, the public water suppliers have proposed a methodology where they all get ramp, pre ramp down production. Um, and I think all the methodologies proposed uh, based on the cessation report filed by Quartz Hill Water District, they're going to probably start at a higher pre-production number than, than everybody. But it'll be minus return flows because <coughs> the return flows were 39%. Well, I think that's, that's the debate, is whether return flows are taken out or not. Which they should be taken out. And like I said, that's that's the item that there's a lot of disagreement on that calculation. Because yeah, they can only go by return flows off imported water. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions from that? You know, are you guys working on when they call in tomorrow? Yeah, we're running from this machine. <laughs> Item 7C, Water Resources and Operations Committee. Committee Chairman Van Dam, do you have a report? Um, yes, I do. Why don't you take that one, Matt? Okay. Uh, so this item was um, tabled from the, or discussed at the last board meeting and deferred back to the, um, what committee was that? The Water Resource and Banking Committee, I believe. Um, so the committee met last week and discussed the, the proposed agreement and legal counsel was there at that committee meeting. The committee came up with some proposed changes to what was presented at the last meeting and those can be found in the board packet on uh, page one of six of the MOU between Little Rock Creek Irrigation District and Allen Valley East Current Water Agency regarding the sale of bank water. If you look under paragraph one, purpose and goals, the last sentence of the second paragraph, um, we're going to clarify that um, LCID seeks to enter into an agreement with AVAC for the transfer of LCID of bank, or to LCID of bank water from AVAC's Eastside Water Bank that will ultimately be distributed in AVAC service area. So it clearly puts an onus on Little Rock with that statement and then also if you look at section 2.1.7, we added uh, LCID shall be responsible to verify that said import water supply is used within the AVEC service area. I think there was some concern before about where uh, the sold bank water to LCID would be used, and this these modifications clearly identify that that water has to be distributed with and served and ultimately used within AVEC service area. So I think that satisfies some of the concerns that were brought up at the last board meeting. Right. And, and AVAC um, has 90 days to terminate the, if they decide, if they say there's a drought and we don't have that water available to us. Yeah, they're in the agreement, it does give the option for termination. 30, 30 days. Yeah. I, I do have a comment. Uh, uh, <coughs> work together with Little Rock and help people that really basically destitute when it comes to water. But the only concern I have, and I would like you guys to share this with Little Rock, and Little Rock needs to have, I think, a written agreement by the water haulers. They're, they're absolutely not to take that water because it's too tempting to take it over to Lano and Asperia area and also Pinion Hills. Well, it, it's directly in the agreement. I, I know. I, 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 I'm just saying, you know, make sure that because, you know, uh, I'll just let you know also, uh, Crystal Air, most of the majority of Crystal Air is not in ABEC counties. There's, you know, there's areas, there's pockets in this valley where they need water. I know where these areas are, um, you know. Now, another thing is, does that include uh, people coming from Acton? Um, uh, uh, over to Little Rock to pull that water out and then take it back over. I, I, I don't know why. I got a question too. I, I, 
I don't see what the issue is, though, Frank. I mean, we're, we're trying to serve people who are paying, you know, they're, they're paying their property taxes to AVAC. They don't have water. How, how can we justify not being able to serve them? I, I don't know, because you're taking a pump of water out of the adjudicated groundwater basin and moving it out. I, I mean, I know there's a rule. I mean, that's, that's the question I have, is that the water is where it's going to be ta taken from is in a defined legal description. And if they take it out of that legal description, I don't know of any other, it's, what would be the difference of any uh, transferability to do the same thing with the same thing? I, I don't know. And that's a question, I guess, somebody needs to have, you know, yeah. look at. I'm not against I it. think the difference is that we're not talking uh, native groundwater production, right? We're talking imported water supply that's been imported, banked in our existing bank, uh, transferred, paper transferred to Little Rock. Well, they, wait, they uh, paid I, for I, that. I didn't know Little Rock was hooked up to the aqueduct. They are. They treat their own water. Right, so where are they getting that water out of? <laughs> They're uh, getting it out of our bank. No, 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 no. Where are they getting the water out of? They're out pumping of, it out of the ground. They're pumping it out of their existing wells. So, out of the basin. Okay. I, I, just, yeah. I just wanted to bring it up. Well, I think Frank's got a point. You know, we have to be careful that, you know, in, on their tax roll, they shouldn't be in that service district, right? Correct. And that would sure. be on LCID to verify of where this water is going, right. that they are a taxpayer of that. Right. So I think his question is, if we're shipping water, you know, to a non-taxpayer paying pays, what, you know, what's the penalty for that? Or where, do, where do you draw the line? Yeah. I mean, terminate the agreement. Yeah, exactly. If there's abuse of the, the agreement, then that's where the termination can come in. I think Frank is, is correct in that we, we, we can't let it go out of our boundaries. Our boundaries are a, a little bit larger than the adjudicated boundary areas. So you get into those two areas, but certainly we can sell our imported water outside the adjudicated boundary areas to areas that are within AVEX general service area. It, it's a complicated issue, and I think we're going to be looking at uh, rules and regulations regarding water service and ordering water and all that in the, in the future. And I think that committee, whoever looks at that, is going to have their hands full in trying to pricing and, and uh, where the water has to be used and ordering and, and all that. But on a short term basis, um, I think, but I agree with Justin. We we try to let's try to serve our our taxpayers as best we can. You know, um, I just brought it up just for discussion, more or less than not give. I, I see around a way around it, and one of the ways around would be if because we take state, take water out of the aqueduct, treat our east side treatment plant, somehow we had an agreement with Little Rock to put a meter over there, yeah. and then they would service those people. Now we're not pumping water out of the ground. You know, I'm just saying we need to take a look at this stuff. Good ideas. And in, in the short term, that you know, this agreement will get us out of the business of selling or providing water to cold, cold water companies, which takes up a lot of staff time and, and effort on our part to provide that service. I've always said, you know, people should be allowed to build a house on truck water. I've always believed that, it, you know. You know, they have to kind of the same level to do that. So, do I have a motion? I'll move to second. Any more discussion? Roll call vote, please. Shelly Sorcible? Yes. Keith Dias? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. Justin Lane? Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. Thank you. Marlon Barnes? Yes. Gary Van Dam? Yes. That occurred. Item 8A, Principal Engineer's Report. Virgil. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'll be discussing uh, three contracts today that have been ongoing for the past uh, couple of years. First is Cal City Construction. I'll be reporting uh, the February 1st through March 31st, as they did not uh, request payment over the last couple of months discussed it in finance and I gave them an update which was uh, commissioning of the HVAC system, landscape work has been completed, uh, 
the punch list work of the entire building is commenced. Um, and next period's projections are um, anticipated certificate of occupancy and completion of all punch list work. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'll, otherwise I'll move on to Telpro. Okay. Next is Telpro Voice and Data. We did the low voltage wiring and equipping project. Again, the same uh, reporting period, February 1st to March 31st. Um, they had already commenced their punch list work and are <coughs> working to complete it, as, as well as uh, performing minor programming. And those two items are anticipated to be completed by the next reporting period, as well as, as, well as training of staff. And the third and final is the uh, Optera project. The three remaining solar arrays are the east side NEM <coughs> site, which is one meg uh, megawatt, is anticipated to be completed by the end of May. The west side NEM site, which is also one megawatt, is end of June. And the largest, the RES PCT, which is three megawatts, is end of July. And with that, concludes my report, unless you have any questions. Yeah, I'll update us on the uh, what we can't open our lab. Oh, yes, the lab. Circling back to the Cal State construction project, which is this building, um, we are currently waiting on the status of completion of the elevator, which requires an indicator light. We anticipate that to be completed by the middle to the end of May. So that's because of um, ADA accessibility requirements by the city of Palmdale. Um, they will not allow public access to the lower level until that elevator has been resolved. And who inspects the elevator? The state of California. It works 100% and we can't use it because some guy can't get out from Sacramento to inspect it. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions for Bernie? Thank you very much. Welcome. Item 8B, Resource yes. Managers Report. Tom? Before Tom gets started, this is a continuation of our series of reports from various department managers within the agencies. If you recall, we've covered operations department, the lab director, um, and principal engineer. So it's Tom's turn, and he's got a great presentation and report to follow under item 8B2. So, you can help. Thank you. Good evening, Director. Uh, I'd like to move through our uh, quarterly report. As Matt mentioned, we'll uh, be doing this. Uh, you'll be seeing this on a regular basis. So, stop me along the way if you have any questions. Uh, also, as Matt mentioned, uh, we'll be going through the, our first annual uh, water resources report. So, that's a new for this year. Okay. Uh, just to give you an overview uh, of the organizational chart and where water, water resources management fits in. So there we are under uh, Matt's supervision. Uh, I'm the only one under water resources currently. Uh, just some of the tasks that are uh, under the water uh, resource management purview or our resource management obviously. Working with state water projects, so it has everything to do with state water project deliveries and communications. Uh, water transfers and exchanges, which became a very important thing this last year. Also, uh, special uh, state water projects, uh, projects that I get involved with uh, related to uh, things that are outside of the normal water resources stage. Uh, also, I deal uh, and oversee customer uh, delivery and billing. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think it works. Sorry. Um, also, I uh, oversee the water service agreements with our customers. Uh, regional water resources, that includes, you know, basically our communications with uh, the regional water interest in the Animal Valley. Uh, Animal Valley Water Master Support, so we support them with water resource. Uh, water conservation, so I'm the water conservation coordinator. And IT management assist, so help out a little bit with uh, IT. Uh, just to give you kind of a more uh, detailed uh, side of some of these things. Short-term water supply planning. 
you know, this is daily uh, sea water project communications on imported water and then also local groundwater. Uh, so I deal with the carryover water, I deal with the Article 21 that's available. Um, I communicate with the Department of Water Resources on dry year um, programs and turn back pool waters when they're available. Uh, Yuba Core, some other, and nickel family water, nickel water. Uh, those are non state water project waters that we want to take advantage of when they're available. Uh, local groundwater pump back. So uh, we did a pump back when we had drought here. We were able to pump back um, some of our water, actually, to after it and just reuse it again. Uh, and that helped us out quite a bit during the drought. Well, it was working. It did work. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, new this year, new and exciting stuff happening. We developed the first formal uh, 2018 water supply plan. We saw it at, at the last board meeting. And uh, we've had, had this plan, obviously, on, on my desktop and everything else, but um, and we just kind of formalized and put it together a little bit more presentable for you to, to look at and review and approve. Uh, also, to this year, uh, for the first time, we did a first annual water resources report. And again, this is a formalization of uh, a document that will be able to be distributed uh, throughout the region. Here we go. In regards to long-term water supply planning, um, this is when we look out, you know, every five years we look at our urban water management plan, which so several of you are familiar with. We, we uh, get a consultant to come in, an engineer, and uh, we work with them and review the plan, and we approve it and bring it back to the board. <coughs> Also, too, we, uh, I'll be assisting with the uh, water system master plan, which will be coming soon. Hopefully, very um, soon we'll have that master plan uh, finalized and up to you guys. Uh, in regards to water supply reporting, uh, you know, you see the general manager reports at each meeting, so I prepare those. Um, also, I uh, prepare special agency presentations for, for the region. Uh, also, report regularly to uh, the state in regards to groundwater extractions and in regards to water uh, master support, I collect and uh, report on the annual imported water deliveries and then also the groundwater protection reports. So this is something fairly new that we're doing, but now we have to do that annually for the water master. So uh, in regards to the state water project, um, we'll have a lot of communications with other state water contractors and of course the Department of Water Resources. Uh, uh, so I am uh, the representative for the State Water Contractors Operations Committee, also the State Water Contractors Energy Committee. Also will uh, attend the Water Transfers Work Group uh, when we're talking about exchanges and transfers. The pumping program, which I mentioned earlier, uh, there is a facilitation group and a monitoring group which closely watches pumping uh, specifically about water quality, and I take part in that. And, and I also follow the group for the dry air program, so I'm involved in all Water transfers exchanges have become very important to us, and you'll see that a little more on my um, annual report. But, uh, managing these delivery partnerships is a it's almost constant uh, effort because uh, we have a lot of folks involved, a lot of water moving, a lot of scheduling has to go on, and we have to enforce the agreements that are in place. So that deals with special pricing, invoicing, things of this sort. So I track I track that, and, and some examples of that for this past year, 2017, have been Central Coast Water Authority, uh, Santa Clara. Metropolitan, we did an exchange, basically a storage. They sold water here locally. Uh, also, San Gregorio uh, Pass Water Agency, uh, we did a transfer uh, of nickel water with them, along with Homer LLC, uh, working with our partner, Kern County Water Agency. We uh, transferred water out of ABEC, and we sold that basically to, uh, to benefit the agency uh, because we had an excess water this year in 2017. Uh, to Home Ranch, uh, I deal closely with them on the nickel water return, which has been uh, has gone well this past year. In regards to uh, special projects, uh, I, I mentioned. Can get the answer in the back? Um, Homer, is that Willow Springs? Uh, we do, yeah. It, it, well, there's a portion of that. Uh, uh, okay. Yes. Is that Andrews, Andrews Group? Yes, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the okay. parent company. 
uh, special projects, state, statewide project turnout development. So I work with uh, City of Palmdale, for example, and other, other partnerships on the upper end of the Creek project. Which, uh, we're somewhat at on hold regarding the turnout itself and the pipeline. And the reason is, is because um, the Department of Water Resources, although they approved um, the original design, they have since come back and said, well, have you guys considered relocating the turnout here? And so now they're making us basically look at a different location this for the second time. Um, and so we're still, we're still working with them on that. Um, and what we are finding is that Communication is the key with the department always, and what we're finding though is a lot of the um, a lot of the driving force behind these for getting these projects forward is the local folks rather than the Sacramento folks, um, and so there's this, this close collaboration that has to happen. And unfortunately, a lot of times the local folks in the state are not talking to Sacramento folks, and it's hard to believe. But and so we don't get a lot of movement very quickly. Um, right now, we're currently looking into the alternative uh, of putting uh, the turnout. In. To where? We're putting the turnout uh, basically off of a, uh, off of a blow off um, at um, basically right along the creek bed, in the creek bed, rather than doing it um, uh, downstream in on the Athra. So we're looking at that. Um, we're also looking at um, coming back. We don't believe that capacity is going to be large enough for what they would like. We're coming back and we're going to um, propose something slightly different on the Athra. So. And in a nutshell, we're, we're working, we're still moving forward with it. Uh, as you may know, Gordon Fair left the city of Palmville. Well, Gordon, Gordon was, uh, really was the driving force at the city of Palmville. Mike Chabotti, who you know is from APOM, has replaced him, but it takes time, you know, for to come up to speed. So we're, we're meeting with him, we're trying to meet with him regularly at the city of Palmville. Uh, we've already met twice uh, with the Department of Water Resources on either on the phone or, or even having um, I don't, the part I don't understand is the, you said they t uh, approved it. The location only come back and they want to change their mind. Yeah, and, and a lot of that is about um, the timing of uh, that they have a very limited window of construction on the Africa. and um, and so this deals a lot with, uh, with uh, what's called copper dam. Copper dam is required to put in so that they can construct it. And that's a very very tight window, and so um, because of these delays, it's that window is obviously closing, and uh, and the reason why that's a big issue for the city of Palmdale is that their grant funding, uh, they did receive $6 million in Prop 1E funding. Their grant funding is, is has already been extended <coughs> once. So now they, they may have to go back again and extend again because of these. So there's a lot of work from different angles and we're continuing to meet with the uh, city of Palmdale. And other what about, um, is there anybody Dan Floyd can help us out? With the uh, people up there in the... Yeah. Something to think about. Yeah, he, yeah, Dan has definitely been instrumental in helping us in the past, especially when we deal with the Tom Grant's turnouts. Um, and so, yeah, you, you may be correct on that, Frank. You may have to. Uh, right now, I can't. Because um, the thing with Palmdale, bringing up speed, that's, that's, that doesn't matter right now. What matters is getting approval where they're going to put yeah. the turnout. Because mm -hmm. if they, we get approval, you know, we're coming into the time you can install them because, yeah. we're, you know, by the time they get through, if we can get approval here in the next 60 days or something like that, 90 days, then we can start designing it, and then they can put in, you know, during December through March or something like that, before yeah. the water's needed. If you don't, then we can wait a whole other year. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that has happened already, well, it's happened at least once more recently, but in the past, for other reasons. Yeah, that's a good point. So I may talk, I'll talk to Dan and see if we can, if there's anything, if he feels that there's any angle he can take it. Uh, along with the turnouts, uh, I mentioned the pump-in program, uh, which, is, which has been new for us uh, over the more recent years. We haven't done that in the past. Uh, we, I, I helped uh, develop the uh, I developed the pump-in program, submittals to the department for approval. They have to go through the facilitation group I mentioned for approval. Um, this includes monitoring of, uh, all of, uh, of all of our wells and water quality and such. Also, too, when I'm in this facilitation group, the reason why I call in and the reason why I, I stay involved is because we need to monitor neighboring state water contractors uh, to make sure that water quality is not harming us. So we, we may comment on if, if we feel water quality is going to be an issue for us downstream of another agency, we, we may comment on that and make sure that we're involved. Is SIGMED included in that? Or are you doing um, with SIGMED at all on that? Um, not for that 
uh, particular um, program because in most cases that's considered a temporary pump in. So it's an annual evaluation of temporary pump ins, and so it's when it's involved as well. Uh, the, the project we have with USGS on, on monitoring our wells every year is about 200 of them, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Okay. Do they do water testing too? Or is yeah, they do, they do uh, the cycle water testing about 30 wells. So, well, this is what I was bringing up. I brought this up a long time ago. We need to get them, we tell them what wells we want. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the groundwater adjudicated groundwater yes. basin. That way we can monitor these wells and make sure, uh, you know, we're going in the right direction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we have done that. We definitely don't want to double, double our work. No, but has anybody gone? To, doesn't the water master engineer have to prove that? Yeah, in fact, the water master engineer has met with. Yeah, the water, water master engineer. I'm, I'm asking questions. Water master engineer has met with USGS representatives okay. to uh, look at modifying the wells that are tested for both level and for water quality. There you go. Yeah. 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 Like I said, we don't want to double our work. Don't you know, take your money. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get a map of those wells? Yeah, we can do that. Monitoring wells. Yeah, and I think that's uh, it's in the annual report for the water master, but we can get that to you. Okay, the one thing I'm asking, I'm asking for them to put the APN numbers that where those wells are located, so we can see them on a map. Instead of just dots on a bunch of squares. Yeah. That way, somebody can refer to that and know where that well is approximately located. It will help us because with our groundwater banking. Projects, and we're going to go start expanding to more to the east side. It'd be nice to see which wells, what they're producing, water quality and quantity of the wells. Absolutely, yeah. also helps out water masters. Yeah, yeah, APN numbers. In regards to water resource, uh, uh, I also uh, overlook the customer delivery billing I mentioned. This includes you know annual customer requests. So we get the requests coming in every year. We review those. Uh, something new this year is we are asking for a five-year outlook, uh, and that again ties somewhat into water management. But really, we want to we want to be able to better plan for the future, especially as uh, individuals are being affected by the ramp down uh, mm -hmm. adjudication. So uh, also, I supervise the monthly billing process, so I oversee that and make sure that's going smoothly. Customer service for local agencies and that includes uh, everything from the billing to also resolving meter discrepancies. We have that happens. And also, I overlook the uh, uh, developer water capacity fees and make sure that if there's any you know, issues with that, and I help out with that. Uh, touched a little bit on water service agreements, and uh, I did help to develop those. And what we're doing. Uh, in more recent uh, development of water resource or water service agreements is actually adding in more land turnout specifications and also you know we want to be able to know where our water is going what lands it's going to be attached to and how the turnout is going to look what it's going to be like uh, we're doing we do re I work on a reassignment of water service agreements and available uh, uh, board review of the, those things because each one of those has to come back to the board uh, something one of the goals for actually for the next couple of years is to actually uh, update our water service agreements to make them more, a little bit more applicable to our um, more recent happenings. In regards to regional water resource planning, uh, you're familiar with the integrated regional water management planning, I believe, or, or what we like to call it. So we're involved in both the Antelope Valley and the Fremont Basin planning groups. Uh, we represent, I re help co-represent on both those groups. Uh, that means we review comments uh, and review a comment on the plan. We assist with the grant applications. Uh, so I worked with uh, the IWP group on um, creating our application for property four, which we received uh, five point four million dollars for our APEC, um, the West Side Water Bank. Also, too, we helped out with Proposition One E for the City of Palmdale, which got them six point uh, six million dollars where they got their own. Uh, now, one of my jobs is the uh, resource manager position with the ABC Water Contractors. Wow, okay. uh, water conservation, I am the uh, agency's water conservation coordinator. Although, as a wholesaler, we're not heavily involved in uh, conservation, we do help out our retailers quite a bit who are more involved. 
Uh, we, I do oversee the conservation grant programs. Uh, back in 2014, 2015, we budgeted uh, about $400,000 over those two years for helping our customers to save water. And so uh, uh, BC ran that program, partnered with our local purveyors for conservation. In regards to public events, uh, you're familiar, I think, with the Smart Water Landscaping Expos and uh, Kids Ag Day we did recently. Salute to youth, we do it here in October. So those are some outreach things I get involved in. Uh, IT management assist, I help out with this. This is change you, going to change you real soon. Co I coordinate basically and, and uh, administer and help out with AVEC and the ABC Water Contractors website. New this year, we have our avwatermaster.net website. Not to be confused with the .org website, which is, is the core website. But, so it's .net. So if you go on the website, you'll get the updated information on the water maps. <coughs> and so we just got that developing and, and uploaded. Uh, also, too, I help with uh, staff computers and mobile devices and things. A lot of this, though, is going to go away because we uh, board approved a three-year contract with Sada Systems, and they are to help with our IT systems. So that's going to be a good, a great help for the agency. Some of the recent accomplishments, you know, for the agency and for water resources, uh, you know, we had a record high year in 2017 as far as delivery. And we say our project deliveries, you know, uh, over 102,000 acre feet. Transfers, exchanges, I mentioned we did a lot of those, uh, you know, about 48,000 acre feet. Carryover, we had a large amount of carryover, which really helps us out this year because we're currently operating off of carryover water from last year. So uh, 40,000 acre feet, almost 40,000 acre feet carryover. And that's being stored. We're using the state water project system rather than our own to store it because it doesn't cost us anything. So we use that carry over there and uh, we'll continue to store it there as long as it doesn't you know, burn a spill. Um, also, too, another accomplishment is we fulfill a lot of our exchange obligations. You know, we completed a return to Tahoe Ranch, which we've been trying to do for a long time. It seems like almost 10 years we've been trying to, it has been about 10 years. We've been trying to, um, been trying to, uh, we've been trying to uh, return that water and we did complete that uh, early part of this year. So we're done. And that was over 22,000 acre feet to Tom Ranch. We uh, an obligation to go there. Santa Clara has delivered to us, returned back to us 11,000 acre feet. Central Coast returned back to us 8,000 acre feet. Metropolitan has stored of their water, they stored, uh, uh, 10,000 acre feet, which so they'll leave, leave behind the 10%, they'll get 9,000 back. San Gregorio, I mentioned before, and those are transfers of uh, nickel water. Also, uh, too, we updated and improved the customer billing. Uh, basically, uh, there was really an effort to try to make the meter reads more accurate and, uh, and also improve the tracking of bank water. And basically, I, I want, it's my job basically to track every drop. And I think we're, we're trying to do that better. We're doing better all the time. Uh, other recent accomplishment, if we did, as I mentioned, we reported the AB Water Master. We're collecting, reporting all of our annual import water, groundwater production. Um, developed uh, also, too, uh, the plan. I mentioned the two first annual uh, water supply plan for 2018, and then also the first annual water resources report. New turnouts, uh, you know, we uh, did the initial design, went through a lot of work to get the initial design, and continuing on that, as I mentioned. To Home Ranch, we finally got their uh, last of their four turnouts completed for uh, for their banking and for their development of the centennial project in the future. Uh, also, I worked to create the website for the AV Water Master. Some of my goals for the next couple of years, uh, a big one is, is the reporting, the collection, reporting, monitoring of water resources. So we really want to join water supplies, customer deliveries, banking, water quality, all of these things in one place so that we can go there. And we can improve customer billing, but we can also improve our staff um, efficiency because it's, it's difficult when you have multiple sheets all over the place or invoices or billing all over the place. We want to tie it all together. So we want to tie the water resources also to our GIS system because um, that's a perfect place to, uh, to uh, interface with uh, water resources is on GIS because a lot of it is location based. We want to create and improve the delivery and billing reporting that we're doing too because our customers, we occasionally do get customers who complain about our billing is not very clear because of the system we use. So we want to make that better. We want to make it a little more user friendly. So that's our goal. 
Uh, another goal I uh, mentioned already uh, is the quarterly amount of reporting, and that's reporting that will be coming back to uh, quarterly water resources um, uh, reports to the board. Excuse me, to the board, and we'll bring, be bringing back the annual uh, distribution of the um, annual report. Uh, a couple other things here. Do we want to? We want to pursue, we're always doing this, we're always pursuing you know, additional water exchanges and we have a lot of partners that we deal with. You know, long term, short term, you know, we're, we're willing to work, you know, every year to get uh, different exchanges going. We want to continue to benefit us and them um, and we want to establish new partnerships too, which are always possible. Uh, some of the new turnouts, I'm hoping we'll get this up around Ragosa Creek turnout completed this next year. And then the John Ranch, I mentioned uh, we did that. Uh, but we want to continue to operate those turnouts. It's one thing to have them, we want to continue to, to have them operate as long as we have water. Also, to another goal, this is kind of more of the IT related, but it is still a goal of mine, is to have the uh, AVEC and ABC where our contractors' websites updated, make them more user friendly, a lot more uh, easily accessible. And that's the end of my resources report. On the, on the water transfers, Tom, do you see uh, that's going to be the water master engineer on that, Phyllis, on the water, on all the transfers <coughs> water in Wyoming? Or uh, when, I refer, when I refer to transfers in this in this regard, it's not a state water project transfer. Yeah, it's not Delaware water. Right. Yeah. It's just a state water project, you water. water. But local transfer of water is going to be up to yeah. up to be the water master engineer, right? Yeah, the, the engineer will. Uh, re receive those forms for the parties that want to transfer and track the transfers. Right, right. Yeah. And do the farmers still have to uh, report to the state resource board on their pumping now that there's an adjudicated basin? Yeah, I believe that's still a requirement. If you produce over, pump more than 25 acre feet per year, you still should report to the state water resource control board. And we also did that idea of reporting to. Okay. I think we can, we can move right into the next item. Good report. Yes. Good job. I wanted to uh, cover with the board uh, our first annual uh, water resources report. Um, hopefully, you have it. Get a copy of it. So, this is our first one. So our first report, which this is for 2017. So we want to have this completed every uh, by the, by the uh, first quarter of the year, the following year. Um, so that's been completed. Um, and I'm going to step through a few, a few of the items in there, but again, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, first, uh, the purpose of it, and in the first few pages, talks about the purpose of it. Really, the purpose is, you know, you want to have a document that you can hand out to people and to be able to give give to the folks, the regional folks, to uh, better tie in, you know, the AVEX plan. You know, this fits in with our strategic plan. It fits in with our water master plan. It fits in with uh, uh, integrated regional water management planning. So that's really what the purpose of this is: to be able to give both the directors, um, staff, and regional uh, water interests you know, a better understanding of AVEX. I have a question. Is you think is AVEX going to get Give us glasses for this print. Oh, <laughs> they are, and how you know, AVEC after the 10 percent leave behind, we have uh, 110,833 acre feet banked. That's recoverable water. That's minus the 10 percent. You can see the graph there shows obviously a huge uptick in the recharge from 2017 for water. Recharge. That's where we deliver about 71,000 acre feet for recharge just in 2017. What are you projecting this year for recharge? Uh, downwards about 15,000. Yeah, this is allocation. We might get an uptick in allocation. I don't want to get too late. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to tell you more about that. Uh, also, I have in there in this section about transfers and exchanges, and just talks about the most recent exchanges and transfers we've done. I have a chart there too, the 2 dash. Six on page nine, which kind of gives you the pluses and the minuses of the transfer. We transfer water in, but we also transfer for water out. <coughs> so that kind of gives you an idea of what that looks like. Um, 
you know, we did about uh, about 48,000 transfers you know, overall um, this past year. Uh, so that gives you a rundown on that. Um, and I have a section there, 2.3, about groundwater, and that uh, you know starts to talk about our production, our demand production, because our groundwater is, is customer demand driven. Um, so we have you know groundwater production about 7,680 acre feet in 2017. And a little chart that shows where, where it's coming from. Also, do have groundwater monitoring. Uh, and this relates, kind of talked a little bit about groundwater levels and things. And we monitor groundwater levels at our sites. Um, so during the drought years, uh, figure 2 8 on page 11 kind of shows you what water banking does. You know, water banking, when we started, we had a certain water level overall in our west side water bank, for example. You know, we started to pump and we pumped quite a bit in drought years and it went down. But as soon as 2017 came, we started recharging and it rebounded, you know, 120%. So, you know, it just pumped right back up. So that's what that chart's showing. And we can see that our water levels have gone, come right back up. And that's usually the normal cycle you're going to see for our banking. You're, you're not going to see like the state line. You're going to see this up and down. So we pump, it's going to be recharged, it's going to be back up and down like that cycle. Uh, also, too, on page 11, you know, starts the water supply, supply and demand summary. But the supply summary there is, is about uh, state water project and then also about total water supplies, imported water supplies from the aqueduct and then our groundwater. And that's on figure 3.2, the chart there shows on um, page 12. So again, we have over, uh, you know, almost 111,000 acre feet that we can recover from our bank. Um, on page uh, 13, there's a demand summary, and this is interesting because it shows it shows what our customers order and what we actually deliver. And um, on that figure 3.3, it shows that there's uh, over 12,000 acre feet that they over ordered, uh, which which is normal. I mean, most people budget put a budget number on it, so uh, they ordered over 12,000 acre feet more than what they really took. So we have about three years worth of water bank. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. If, we, look at, we have a problem. Yeah, exactly right. There was no water available for the state water project. Project, um, project that we can supply water for yeah. three, almost three years. Yeah, exactly. Because we look at about forty-five thousand a year. That's, um, that's phenomenal. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. 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 We'll keep going. When we can get the water, this year might not be that year, but <laughs> we'll do a little bit of recharge. Because we'll still have that. Yeah, we'll have reserves, there. so. Yeah, exactly. And the greatest part about that is local. We don't have to, we don't have to rely on state water project systems, failures, um, fish, <laughs> things like that. We have it here. It's local. On page uh, 14, it talks about the banking recharge demands. And you see a little bit more detail about the demands. Again, we recharged in 2017 alone 71, over 71,000. And that means well, that's about 64,000 recovery just, just in 17, 2017 alone. And then I continue on to do a supply uh, demand summary. Page 15 shows a nice chart. I like this chart. It kind of shows, shows uh, what imported water was available to us and what we, uh, versus what we actually delivered. So um, that's kind of a good thing. You can compare you know, what we have versus what we delivered. And, uh, and then uh, two, then it falls over to the next year. 20, uh, coming into 2018, we had over 39,000 acre feet of carrier water. I uh, do give a little bit of background. I want to have background on adjudication. So I gave a little bit of groundwater adjudication background on page 15. Page 16, continue on, talk a little bit more about the imported water use. Uh, also, return flows. I do a little bit, I'm no expert on it, but I, I took basically from the, the judgment and from the water master engineer um, some uh, interesting facts there and, and, and put those and put them in very small fonts in the back. So you can clearly read them. I tried to fit it on. <laughs> that's coming. Most of that's coming out of uh, comes directly from the water master engineer, and we, we fill in the chart. Uh, so got more information on page 17 there, and then it continues on in the rest of the things. That, that, uh, but uh, you know, operations. John John Bazinian's group helped me out with uh, more details on exactly what we're doing at the banks, what we're operating at, and those things. So that was really helpful. This is a great report. So that's the recording we've seen it every year. And if you have any questions? I do want to have put this. Is this put on our website? Not yet. But you're going to put it on there? Yeah. Yeah.
Because there you can go to pray. What's that? <laughs> oh, that's true. Right. 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 <laughs> On the adjudication, do we uh, see Kumar revisiting that uh, number before 17 years if it's if the water table comes up? Matt, question or something that that's probably a legal yeah. question, but I think I think it's quite possible, along with the. Return flows. You know, I think if if there is a, a, a tremendous change in safe yield or uh, and the, the percentage of, of return flows, which we all have our opinions on, uh, I think I think the court has the jurisdiction. I think to we review it. I think we can do it in eight years. I think if we put in, I say within eight years we put in. 500 is three quarters of a million acre feet of water in the ground. You know, with net coming in and stuff like that, with a 10 percent, remember it's 10 percent left behind. That's 75 thousand acre feet of water every year. I, I'll bet you we could petition with the engineer, um, with the management program we have. I bet you can cut that thing in half. But you have to show where the water is. Yeah. And just, I don't think Tomar will be around. Well, yeah, much longer, but a, a new judge would be, would be, I think, willing to take a look at it. Uh, you're, you're going to have people that scream uh, about, hey, we projected our rates based on, on these schedules, but I, I think the court has the inherent jur jurisdiction to, to take a look at it, a fresh one. Right, I think with that big rock creek, uh, you know, um, replenishment, so if that it really takes off. And it yeah. looks like it's going to go uh, between the three water suppliers. Yep. So when are we going to start? When was that all going to uh, Well, all three member agencies have approved it, as well as the association, the MOU. Right. So uh, we're getting ready to send out an RFP to get an engineering firm on, on board to start doing the feasibility study and the CEQA work. Mm -hmm. So we're still a little ways off, but we're going to get started on the, the engineering work right away. So that, that should also help that groundwater, you know, the, the recover the basin. Oh yeah, definitely. A lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Tom. Tom. Good report. And we are asking for the board to approve uh, the 2017 annual water resources report. Um, second. Any more discussion? Roll call vote, please. Shelly Sourceable? Yes. Keith Dias? Yes. Frank Donato? Yes. Justin Lane? Yes. Robert Paris? Yes. Marlon Barnes? Yes. Gary Van Dam? Yes. That carries. Item 8C, General Manager's Report. Matt? All right. Good evening. I'll go through uh, the GM report this evening. And we're in presentation mode, so hopefully you guys aren't burned out yet. <laughs> I'll make it quick. Uh, so first up, uh, snowpack conditions. This shows uh, percent of average for snowpack, precipitation, runoff, and then the blue line there is uh, shows reservoir storage. And again, these are all percent of av long-term average. So we've had a great march, uh, which helped on all of these percentages significantly. You can see we're 60, 70 percent of average for snowpack and precipitation. Um, as I mentioned, uh, last month was great. It boosted the snowpack from 15 percent to 60 percent just in that one month. So it was kind of a miracle march. Um, the projected median April to July runoff uh, is projected at 70 percent of average uh, compared to last year, which as you know was a really wet year, that was 170%. So big change from 17 to 18, but still pretty good overall percentage of our long-term average. Uh, and you can see there, again, the, the big jump from last month to this month from 40% of average to 70% of average. Uh, the estimated runoff of San Sacramento, San Joaquin is about 3.8 million acre feet of runoff, and it's gonna peak in mid-May. 
uh, reservoir storage is at 100%, 105% of average as compared to last year, which peaked at, uh, at this time, 115% of average. Uh, the, the precipitation forecast is dry. If things are warming up, snowpack, or the snow level is increasing, as you can see in the chart there, uh, near 10,000 feet now, and no precipitation in the short-term forecast through uh, Sunday of this week, it looks like. This is our normal chart where we show the eight station index in Northern Sierra, uh, Northern Sierra precipitation. You can see it's slowly ticking up there. That's the blue line. We're currently at 38.5 inches. Uh, as of this is as of last week, April 19th. So it may have ticked up just a little bit more. But uh, you can see we're not too far off of the long-term <coughs> average of 51.8 inches. And last year, as you know, was still set the the record up there, 94.7. That's the green line. Uh, reservoir conditions, Lake Orville uh, is increasing in capacity just due to that runoff that we just mentioned. So you can see it's still below the long-term average, which is the blue shaded area, but it is upticking quite a bit. You can see the big jump there in, in March that we experienced. And then uh, San Luis, they're starting to uh, out of San Luis or draw off out of San Luis so you can see that blue line starting to dip off but it's tracking real close to the, the long-term average which is shaded in blue there. Uh, this just shows uh, Lake Warville and San Luis and, and all the reservoirs throughout the state water project system uh, what um, long-term average and current level for percent of storage. <coughs> State Water Project, as you know, we're currently at 20% allocation for table A. Um, you saw at the last meeting, we're still in really good shape from a water supply standpoint with the amount of carryover we have from 2017 plus this 20%, uh, which equals 28,969 acre feet for the, the agency, in addition to all of the bank water that we have. We're in a really good position. Um, but there is some good news and or potential good news some rumors that the allocation is going to be increased a little bit so it could go up uh, here in roughly 10 percent uh, first week of March we should hear that what that number is and that's primarily due to the, the great March rainfall that we had up north um, and then our uh, 2018 plan as you saw the last meeting is we're projecting to deliver about 45,208 feet to the service area as compared to last year 101,800 acre feet and as you know a big portion of that was delivering imported water to our west side water bank and east side water bank i think it was roughly 70,000 acre feet of that was delivered for banking purposes uh, this is kind of uh, where current snapshot of uh, our delivery systems uh, you have the rated flow there for each of the facilities we're broken into conventional treatment and ge geo purification processes through our banking operation and recovery process. Um, the current flow rate for each of those facilities, so cumulatively we're, we're about 23.5 million gallons per day, starting to tick up as the weather warms up. Each of our facilities are showing an increase in, in their flows. Um, Roseman Water Treatment Plant is back online. That was offline for number of months we were providing water through the west side water bank for the uh, roseman mojave those systems uh, but the plant is back online flowing currently at 4 mgd and let's see what else we got there you can see compared to last year's flow we're up a little bit for this time of year and 2018 deliveries through march so we've delivered roughly 4,000 acre feet through March. Banking operations. Uh, you can see we've got all the units consistent this month. Last or last meeting, I think we had some variations in the units, so it was kind of harder to track, but uh, we have the recharge capacity for each of the facilities. Um, the current recharge rate, 
So we're recharging total cumulatively about, uh, or between all the sites, 78.5 acre feet per day between West Side Water Bank, East Side, and High Desert. Uh, last year, you can see we we're recharging significantly more just because of the, the wet year. And then uh, 2018 to date, this is January through March, we've recharged roughly 10,000 acre feet. Water quality remains great. Uh, both import water supply has good water quality and we're meeting all of our targets when it comes to THM levels throughout the system. So plant staff is doing great treating water and operation staff is doing a good job making sure we're turning water over in the system and delivering high quality water to our customers. A uh, little status update. We have the water master meeting tomorrow here at 10 a.m. Uh, there is a CFE conference later this week. I believe a board member or two may be attending that. Uh, we have the Aqua Conference coming up that uh, week of May 8th up in Sacramento. We also have the Animal Valley State Water Contractors meeting coming up on Thursday, May 24th at 6 p.m. at Palmdale Water District. And then just a couple of reminders, we've had some uh, committee meeting change, changes and then uh, board meeting changes. So we have a special finance committee meeting on Friday, May 4th at 9 a.m. There'll be a reminder sent out. And then we have a special board meeting on Monday, May 7th at 6.30 here. And that's due to the Aqua Conference. And that's all I have to report unless there are any questions. Any questions from Matt? <laughs> Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you. I have nine director's reports. Martin? Shelley? No. Frank? No. Justin? No. Gary? I ask Rob, do you have any director report? I'll take that as a no. Thank you. Item 10, attorney's report. Bill? Nothing. Okay. Item 11. Uh, I believe we'll be going into closed session for item 11C. 11C, that's correct. 